webinar. And it's a practice. We don't have many people yet. We, I think we have one viewer, and no one is here live. But there is a text application, chat application. So if you click on chat, let me show where it is. It's right here, that chat thing. See that? Oh, how do I show that? That blue icon. See? That's chat. So click on chat, and then you can ask questions. But so far, nobody is around uh, chatting. So. Here we go. Uh, and I, th I know you, you you can see us, and this will be in the recording. So that's good. Uh, donations are welcome. You go to the website, click on donate, and 5 10 15 20 $25 would be great. All will help. Um, we have Edmund, who committed to come in a few minutes. So if he comes, then uh, he will pop up here, and we'll speak to him. So far, we speak to the camera for the recording and for the people, at least one viewer who is on the website. And the website, you know, HTTP, uh, humancolony.org. We have questions from users, and we'll start. I guess you can start the invitation. OK. And, uh, and we'll see who comes through. Invited are obviously humans from the colony and gods and uh, anybody who wants to speak to us. Greetings, I've come to see you. The cash, long time no here. I know, I cannot stay long, but I have a celebration to go to soon. But I did want to stop by. They said to Thank stop you. by while others are preparing. What do you celebrate this time? Uh, I cannot tell you this celebration. This is one of personal celebrations. Do you have any news? Um, news? Um, I was not prepared to even come here today, so I have not prepared any news, but I can look for you if you'd like. Uh, no. How about singing? Can you sing a song? Oh, uh, sing a song. Not on the you know, it's not through this, not through this being, no. Oh, can you read a poem? Yes, I can do that. Okay. What kind of poem would you like? About love. A love poem. Okay, let me let me search my internal brain here and come up with a good love poem for you while others prepare. But I cannot stay long.
I will forego the language okay. and just go to the English. How, right. is, how is that? How okay. is that? Okay. When I first saw you glide by, I captured your essence. Just a slight part of your eye, just a slight part of your smile. But it was enough to show me who you were. And then, underneath, when I evaluated your movements, I discovered that we were compatible. I discovered your inner thoughts, which were hiding right out in the open. And I came to you, and we smiled. And we did not share right away. But when we did, it was like I knew you for millennia. And then when I touched, when we touched, when you touched, we became what is love. Thank you much. Was that appropriate? Perfect. That was perfect. It, uh, you can't imagine how much we learn from the poetry. Uh, Can you read at least a couple lines from that in your language? Sure. Um, let me start. Kita ruta sinju shomoka yareran tora tambe sinditi eriko kara tense sambapakite na. Thank you. Uh, can you read any more? Would you like another love poem or would you like something your else? Your choice, your choice. Um, I will read a nature poem. Okay. Because I love nature and it has been preserved and rebuilt uh -huh. in our society and it is gratefully appreciated. Uh -huh. at this time. We are becoming more aware again of our nature. Uh -huh. So we we are happy for that. So let me tell you one of those. This is a poem I wrote by the way. Okay. I will take part in that which is called nature. I will come down from a glide and let my feet touch the ground. The yellow, the green, the orange, the red, they come into me and color me. Into my eyes, into my heart, into my soul. I then begin to walk and I can feel the pebbles under my feet. And I start to run because I realized the air is all around me and in me and through me and I see the trees and I want them to speak to me but alas they cannot and I touch them and we commune and I let this go and I come back to my space but I will not forget the urgency that I felt being there Thank you much. It's great. It sounds like I could write it. Mm. Yes, yeah. the colors would be different though. Mm. <laughs> Maybe in the fall. Do you have non-serious poem? Non-serious. Something joking. A joke. A joke. If you can. If you can. Um, well, they asked me how I did in my studies, and I told them I glided through. <laughs> how was that? It's okay. It cannot be used in rush in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in human. Yeah, can you like a jo joke stories? A joke stories. Anecdotes. We have personal experiences that are very funny, but we do not really tell many jokes. We do have uh, anecdotes like the one I just shared with you, uh -huh. and witticism. Like that, but um, I'm not much of a jokester. You are, you are, I know you are. 
I do have a sense of humor. All right, how about the joke which made most impression of you so you lost your control or laughed too much? Can you remember any of that? It may not make sense to you. Let's do that. That would be the most transforming joke, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. When I visited the third dimension, I was talking to a farmhand. A farmhand as in watching the animals. And he told me that the animals were uncomfortable today. And I said, why are the animals uncomfortable today? And he said, because they keep hitting their heads on the fences. <laughs> so that's all. <laughs> it was his job. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's very funny, actually. Can you explain why? In, 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 on Earth, it's not a good tradition to explain jokes, but alien jokes you have to explain. <laughs> because if he was in the fourth dimension, they could they would just go through the fences and not hit their heads. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I understand. All right, poetry about ascension. Do you have poems about ascension? Ancient poems? Maybe. Um, I have a, a poem that might co be considered an ascension. All right. Okay. One moment, please. Okay. It is written in a different colloquialism than I'm used to. Okay. But it is a little older. Mm -hmm. And it is from Sphere 2. But it is very nice. Okay. We ready ourselves for the sun in the morning. We ready ourselves for the air when we walk outside. We ready ourselves for the light that comes into our eyes and sheds light on the pictures that we see as reality. We are not ready for the night to come when it comes so soon and so sudden. But yet, the light lifts us through the barriers of darkness and delivers us into the morning once again. We then speak to each other in the wind. We rotate our thoughts in the sun. We share our demeanor with the earth. And we trample not upon the earth, but on the sky. Wow. Thank you much. What was the author of the first poem and the third poem? Um, I was the author of the first two. First, okay. The third was a different author. That was Rantuka. Rantuka. Can you read a few lines from in, in the language, native language? That language, yes. Yeah. Moments. <sighs> All right, here is a question which is a little ticklish, ticklish. We have poetry which is borderline between real poetry and being not really poetic, which is praise for our rulers and nations and races. Sometimes it goes overboard, it becomes lame. Mm. But can you give an example of a good poetry where you praise your rulers, your race, your planets, and that sort of thing? Yes. Uh -huh. Share with me this walk. Share with me this walk. All those who stand on two, share with me this rise. And speak to those who are in high places bending down. They must listen, but not necessarily hear. We are here, walk 
alone with us so that we may know that you understand our hearts and our minds. Rise back up like the head of a flower and speak to the sky about us, for we are all one together and we are all together one. And you are rulers and major people. Keep us in your hearts. Beautiful, wonderful. That's one of the strongest. Do you have revolutionary poems or songs? Um, like Rise Against Tyranny, that sort of thing. Oh, those are very ancient. Yes. Very ancient. Uh huh. Very ancient. Because we have that no more. I understand. We do not rise against. But there was a time on the most recent time was also on planet two. Uh -huh. And there was a person there about four or five of your centuries ago mm -hmm. who became disoriented and brought people into his disorientation okay. and was rising against the political views. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's a poem, okay, but it is something that he wrote, okay. Okay, so his name was um, Borsha, okay, um, and he wrote this. I, I have to read it, actually. sure, because I do not have it memorized. One moment. Why is it that you twist my words into jangled metal? Why is it that you do not believe the heart that is within me? Why is it that my words fall on deafness? Why do you torture me with your arrogance? I am but one with many to follow. And why is it that your thoughts are so foreign to me in my senses. I declare that you must be more like me. Thank you. It's very authentic. In the previous poem, you didn't say the author. The ancient one. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. Which one was that? Uh, the previous. Before that, there was a poem from ancient times about praising the leaders. Oh, that one was. Oh, let me look. Encore. Encore. Thank you. Now, the topic would be depression and getting out of depression, suffering wow. and getting out of suffering. Yes. What would you like to know? A poem. A poem of suffering and getting out of suffering? And depression is not of depression. Well, well, we have little depression, but we do have times of our, in our solitude where we become low. Yes. And to pull out of that, I, I've written a poem about that. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Let me do it. I meditated long today and fell into abyss low down underneath within everything under all through the ground through the core into space and back I could not pull myself back to myself and yet part of me wanted to stay the emotion was so deep so rare so foreign to me that I needed to study it for a while. When I finally arose, it was the voice of my other that brought me back. She pulled at me until I arose and then embraced me when I was aware.
beautiful. Thank you much. That's great. How about unanswered love, unhappy love? That's, you know, I would say half of our poetry or more <laughs> is about unhappy love. Yes, I have to agree with you, Max, that your poetry is very unhappy love oriented. Broken hearts. Yes. Broken hearts. I have only been aware of a few broken hearts. So okay. I did not write a poem about that. All right. Let me see if I can find one. Okay. That one is also would be older, probably. Uh -huh. Oh, from this, there is a couple from this planet uh -huh. that might be worthy broken hearts. <laughs> All right. Let me prepare. Soft, hard, metal, tau, shonda, broken in my brain. You faced me, faced me wrong, faced me inadequate, faced me unsatisfied. And I was not aware of the underneath of the underneath. And you sent a thought that gave me clues of our demise. Enter not, Melalon. Send it off, Kotopur, and you will not be with me now. Thanks. That's great. Uh, was the author? Solomon. Thank you. Wonderful. Anything that comes to your mind which is most useful for listeners? Well, I selected the shorter poems. Okay. There are great and long and lengthy poems. Of I understand. Course, but I, I choose to select the shorter ones that are more to the point. Poems about celebrations? Oh, there must be a million of those. The ones which are especially unusual and bright. But I cannot stay, so I will let somebody else do the celebration for them. Okay. I must go to a celebration. You All reminded right. me of that, and I have. Oh, to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I will not mention that. <laughs> I have to go to a celebration, and I must prepare, because this one has special wardrobe for it. So I must go. Can any other blues speak while you're away? Um, Not I will uh, ask them. None of them have been. Uh, some of them are not happy with their presentation. They uh, feel that they are not. They do not know what to say. Okay. So, okay. But I will ask. That okay. does not mean that somebody not might not volunteer. Okay. Volunteer. I appreciate your visit. It was extraordinary today. Next time, bring more poems. Somebody is coming that I don't know. Okay. Fishing is a little uncertain. Yes, so hold on one minute. Okay.
Yes, hello. This is Steve's do. Hi, this do. You Glad have... to hear have you here. Thank you. We have six viewers right now, we'll have more. A reptilian. Yes. Try to come in. A bad one or okay one? We are not sure. All right. I don't but mind reptilians now, if they're good. But for now we have set them aside. Okay. We must question. Of course. Questions. Of course. Thank you for taking care of it. Someone else will come show you. Thank you. I just brought you that message. Thank you. It was an informal visit. Thank you. Blessings, much, and we'll be happy to have you again. Much weather problems. I see. Thank you. Stop the noise. So, Maxime, uh, hi, Takea. Nice to have you around. Yes, many are wanting to visit you. But okay. at this time, we must be cautious. Okay, of course, yes. We want only uh, the ones which won't harm Jim. Other than that, I don't have any problems, but there not harming Jim is important. There will be visits by unexpected presents. Obviously, you know, anybody is welcome, even negative ones, unless you just want to make sure Jim is fine after that. Okay, the negative person in Jim might come, Jim, obviously. We will not allow that. All right. We will not allow that. Situations in the Earth format are dire in some spots. Okay. So we have been working diligently to help. Okay. For some reason I am having difficulty today. Alright. Lakir didn't, so you don't have to stay if it's un uncomfortable. Momentarily. Okay. If you want to give news about the colonies, that would be fine, but so far the, I didn't hear any big changes. So if there is no big changes, then we can admit that. There is someone watching that has been in the colony. Oh, excellent. You know who you are. Thank you for viewing. I'm great. And please contact me, contact us. We really haven't heard through physical means. We didn't hear anybody from the colonies. If there is a way we can meet face to face or speak on the phone, or anything of that sort. Of the they are reluctant to contact you. I know. But only they know why, and we know why. But yes, there is some reluctance because of what they have to share. Of course. The sharing of this information would mean them being out there to be questioned. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Some of them are family people and do not understand. Want and some would be easy, easy to speak. Some would, yes. Any questions? Oh, many questions. Do you want to answer? Okay. Uh, one is, um, so you didn't like how we call you aliens. And I don't think in English language there is 
a good term for that, but how would you like to be called in English? Collectively. Yes. I would like to be called to curve. But the as a species. You are Lyrans. We are Lyrans. But aliens, extraterrestrials, star people, do you have any preference how all aliens, extraterrestrials, star people, not humans from Earth can be called? There, or... there really is no appropriate technology, uh, uh, terminology. Yes. But we have accepted aliens, star people, extraterrestrials. It's not flattering, but it's appropriate for humans. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, how do you induce the, yourself for astral projection? And is there any easy way for us to do it? We have technology that helps us with our astral projection. It is made for us. It is designated for us. That is why you don't hear from more of us. There is only so many that are designated, that are allowed to speak to humanity. Regular astral projection without technology is permitted. Mm -hmm. But many do not come here. It is forbidden. Okay. But technically, how do you do it? Naturally, how would you induce your astral projection? Is it easy for you to astrally project? We have devices that attach to our heads. Okay. And then we dial it into the specific area uh -huh. of the brain okay. where these, where this happens. I'm, it's hard to explain. but And then they can take that thought and project it. So do you have advice how humans could uh, help themselves to do astral projection? I tried. I can walk around my house, but... When I go beyond that, it's something unknown, and I can't really feel it or see it. I think it's it's more imaginary than real. Some people have no problem; they can go anywhere. Some of them see this um, silver cord. Some don't see silver cord. But you know that is a fascinating topic. People love to astral project, and some would like to get some information from astral projection. First thing about astral projection is you must believe that you can do it. Yes. You must believe in it fully. But and that's only the one part of it. The other part is that you have to expand yourself. Uh -huh. You start with a space inside and expand that space outward until you reach beyond yourself. When you reach beyond yourself, then it becomes tricky because within yourself, that is not a projection. Mm -hmm. That is just within yourself. Your being has just fully enveloped yourself with your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind then must understand that it is not going to be in the body. Mm -hmm. The body is comfortable. Outside the body may not be. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you take this form expand it, bring your mind into it, and force it outward mm -hmm. in a loving, gentle way. But you let the elements draw you. Be not afraid of anything. Be part of everything. Let it become part of you. Otherwise, if you do not let it become part of you, you can't go any farther. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect sense. So you become everything that you touch, mm -hmm. and it moves outward. Of course, your spirit guides are here to help you, so you will be helped. with. But I would prepare with many prayers. Yes. But it is easier for us who have telepathy to do this, mm -hmm. because we can move out from ourselves easily and gather information from others. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. 
because we become interactive. But this is something different. Actual, astral projection is actually making yourself into the into everything. Can you give us a prayer which we could use for an astral projection? Each person has their own way. Okay. My way All right. is I could tell you what I say to myself. Very good. I tell myself that I am here, first of all, and that I know that I can move out. And if I need to move out, I can go quickly if I need to. But my basic prayer with this in mind is that God is the center of the universe. I am now the center of the universe. I am now moving out from the center of the universe into everything. And I picture myself in the center of a sun or in the center of a galaxy or the center of something beautiful and wonderful so that I can move out from that. But it starts as a little small light with inside and the light gets greater. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. Perfect sense. Thank you. How do you return? Returning is much easier. If you do not become part of something you're touching, you return. All right. You cannot go any farther, and if you're not going forward, you're going backwards. Okay. So, how to communicate with, with the guides, with the spirit, spirit guides? This is another way you can do that. You can, as you move out from yourself, you engulf them as well. So mm -hmm. you become part of them. They become part of you. You can talk to them more clearly, and you're your higher self as well. I've never, I, I, the only thing I can see in my meditation is light kind of coming and enveloping me and then leaving slowly. I, but I, I never have to see, tell you yeah, okay. that I am not sure that my method will work for you. I understand. You are a human. Yeah. I am a Lyran. This is the method that works for me. If it does not work for you, there perhaps is better methods I will look into that. Thank you. So I never can hear, I can hear the answers. I send the question, answer comes to me, but I never can face my higher self or my guides. Can How would you recommend kind of facing them I, and hearing from them? I hear them, but I do not see them. Okay. We do not see our higher self or our spirit guides, okay. but we hear them and can be with them, and we can feel them. Mm -hmm. Do you hear them telepathically? Yes. Is it the same telepathy you would use to other no, neurons, or different? It's a spiritual tele telepathy. It's not like it's not like interacting with someone. It's like in your head, but not out. Of coming from someone else. We recently discussed, uh, there are apparently two types of telepathy. One is face-to-face, -face where we have to see the other yes. being, and another one, even to other dimension, you can telepathically connect. What's yes. the difference? How was the mechanism? That's the astral projection part. Ah. So you can speak to others, like I am speaking to you, mm -hmm. through this astral projection that is modified from our brains. Okay. And it is not tele telepathic at all. Okay. I cannot read your thoughts. Okay. I can read Jim's thoughts because I am here. Okay. But that is all. So you speak to your guides through I astral can, projection as well? I can pick up other people that are telepathic, though. Uh-huh. And if they have the beginnings of telepathy, I can pick that up. I can read their lips sometimes. Lips help to do telepathic contact? Um, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Oh. Why did we lose our telepathy in humans? Did we have historically telepathy and then we lose, lost it? The Atlanteans had the most, uh -huh. and their race was lost. They are on other planets, though. Remnants. That is all I can say. They are an isolated species. 
I was pretty sure Atlanteans, many Atlanteans, say well, we had colonists who survived. They do. So they lost the telepathy just by mixing with others or by losing the skill? How did it Not happen? all of them have lost it. Uh -huh. Some of them have chosen to give it up, but some have not. There are reasons for this. There was much pain in Atlantis at the end. Uh huh. Uh huh. And their recollections are born into their future. Mm -hmm. Can be very painful. Mm -hmm. There was much loved ones and much connection. Of course. Some have chosen not to go back in those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And therefore they had to give up their telepathy because otherwise they would naturally be drawn to it. Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense. Yes. Excuse me. All right. No, we we have communications from good reptilians. We know reptilians can be kind, benign, uh, and good, benevolent. The reptilian coming through. He sneaked through without permission. Mm. How do you feel? I'm okay. Thirsty. I'll bring some water. It goes okay. well. It goes well. I'm okay. Oh. What was that? Somebody's at the door. I can't see if there's anybody out there, but hello if you are. Hope that uh, you're all well. Horrible tea or water? Cold tea? Oh, I'll take warm some. tea. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank you. You're still on, on, uh, on air? Uh, it went well. Uh, everything was exceptional. Oh, okay. I will read you more questions. There is a lot of questions. Okay. Um, so and there's nobody here to answer them at the moment. Maybe they will come. Uh, okay. To Babu de Edmond, uh, hello, I'm Ed Murray. How many children do I have? Meaning up there. Up there in uh, space. Yeah. Uh, Who they are with. And will they be able to see them anytime soon? I know I have at least one hybrid child. I made a mistake when I was allowed to meet him or her. And to my knowledge, I have never seen them since. I did apologize to my child. At one point, I asked for them to show up when I was having an aura picture of me taken. They showed up to, next to me. The operator of the computer said they had never seen it happen before. And next question, I'm still to be contacted at some time in the future as I cannot go to the colonies, so the question mark. Obviously, everybody has a question. They volunteered, nothing happened. Or something happened, they were interviewed, and then things no, don't happen. So the main question is, if they, if they are not uh, appropriate for being taken, would they be contacted down here? They want to be part of that. Uh, 
to care will return. Thank you. Thank you. Edmund. 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 Yes. You do have two hybrid children. Are you aware that there are two? He didn't get an answer. Ah, uh, let me open my eyes. Ah, uh, his question was where, who they are with, what, what where species? Are they? Who, yeah, what species, what race? They are Pleiadian. Excellent. Um, but there is another mix in there that I cannot share. Okay, are they with good guys? Yes. That's I guess, the main question. And he was promised an interview and it didn't happen. They have been disbanded at the moment. They will come back online shortly. The reason for the disbandment was to upgrade the questions that they ask the humans when they come to interview. Since we have had telepathic communication with the, the colonies, we have learned that some of our questions may not be appropriate enough. I understand. We are working on a new set of questions. We are working on a new Set of questions. Set of questions. Yes, thank you. That was not what I was going to say, but it will fit. Uh, the question is, how many humans from the website have you taken so far? Two. You must say that was three. Okay. Three. Yes, three. It's fine. But two, one did not stay. Okay. Uh, so, is there a decision, if people are not suitable for going up for some reason, uh, will they be contacted down here? That is the plan. We are working on the ways to do such a thing. Perfect. Is it the curse speaking? Yes. Thank you. I've been having trouble with my technology today. Interesting. We had a reptilian coming through for about 20 seconds. The, the only best thing he said is that not all the reptilians are bad, and he left, or she left. Yes, we heard that communication. It was not sanctioned. I understand. It sounded like a snake. Was it snakish? It was, yes, lizard-like, snakish. Possibly, yes. By your standards, it would be closer to a lizard than a snake. Was it benevolent? That particular reptilian was benign. What race was it? Reptilian. A humanoid? Six foot tall? Seven mm, foot tall? Not, not at all humanoid. Ah. Not at all humanoid. In fact, I am surprised that they were able to make contact. Uh, so they walk on two legs or four legs? They do walk on two legs, but they would not be legs like yours. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So they have a little bit humanoid face, right? They have nose and eyes and actually have, yeah. Extension, an extended head. Which way? It would be back and front. Oh, like that. Like uh, we have some uh, dinosaurs of that sort. More like a crocodile or alligator. Oh, so does he have a big mouth with the teeth? The, the teeth, teeth are not the same, no. But the head shape is what I was referring to. What, what star are they from? We do not talk about them. Oh, fine. What I alliance? am not allowed to give 
any information about them without their permission. It is part of the Galactic Code. I understand. I respect that. Thank you for uh, explaining who came through. So they are benign. And this somebody, particular one was benign. Somebody said we had about, uh, was it third dimensional? They are third dimensional. So somebody, maybe you said that there is about 1,000 third dimensional reptilians in the solar system. Is it about right? That would be a close estimation. All right, so that was a question. Please hurry. Oh, okay. One has one, one, one of you mentioned before that your planet civilization went through an evolutionary process similar to our own. Was there something similar to the fall of man in your race, like a biblical story of Lucifer stealing away Adam and Eve and therefore separating us from God and our natural connection to him? Uh, and our abilities. It was not like that. Our ascension will be similar to yours. Our creation was not similar to yours. You are referring to a beginning and a fall. Mm -hmm. We did not have that. But we did actually have the entity of Jesus as you call him. He was not named that in our species. Uh -huh. But he visits every species uh -huh. as the son of God. Wow. He will explain to you very shortly that the words used then are not the words that they use now and you will get a better understanding of where your Earth is and what is happening to it. Will he explain it through Jim or just through other parents? He's coming to Jim. Excellent. It will be in January. Wow. Exciting. Thank you. If you want to, if you have time and energy, a poem or a prayer or a blessing would be great. May all your endeavors end in fruitfulness. May all your standards fly like an eagle. Your heart be blessed with love and dignity. And you always be in constant prayer about your identity. Um, that's beautiful. Thank you much. And very unusual and very transformational. Thank you. Thank you. May the blessings of the ages be with you and down through your generations. Thank you. We can hear and listen to you as long as you can stay. All the poetry and blessings are absolutely incredible. That's a uh, gold mine you found. I must go now. Thank you much. I appreciate your visit. Blessings. Blessings.
there's a flurry of action up there. I don't know what's going on. It's a lot of it's a lot of, just a lot of movement. I think we're done for channeling part, and we have another 40 minutes. I want to answer the questions which I can answer, and you're welcome to answer from Jim perspective. If somebody wants, if you can, if you are relaxed and somebody wants to come through, you're welcome there. So let me see. Do you yell have any star seeds on Earth at the moment? If so, how many? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. I think I answer asked this do about that before, and the answer wasn't clear. As I believe, most star seeds we have are have on, on Earth. We have Pleiadian and maybe Orion, but not Yael DNA. And same thing with uh, soul. So there is a genetics, and there is souls. I don't think we have many gray and yellow souls here. I know few. One is on internet and uh, on on YouTube. And uh, basically, first incarnation of a gray in a human is autistic and miserable in many ways. They low, uh, they are used to be much more connected to each other and going to third dimension from the fourth and becoming disconnected is very detrimental to ability to perform. You have to be in human, because we hear uh, people who are successful in this life, they have many, have had many incarnations on Earth. So spiritually there is not many Yael on Earth. Maybe there are some, but not many. I think I read maybe one report of a space person who came down, crashed here and incarnated here. Yes, it was a yell, I believe. At least it was a gray, but I think it was a yell gray. He was punished for being too inquisitive. He kind of took a risk to go down to look up and uh, electric charge from that, from li a lightning uh, crashed his apparatus and he and four other members of his crew died. So as a punishment, he was left here to incarnate. And then it, it was a report from a person who, who was him in human body. And of course, he was uh, un very unhappy. And he he remembered his past life, and he felt sorry, sorry <coughs> for his action. So in genetically, there is not many yell, and spiritually, there is not many yell souls. But of course, many of us might have future yell incarnations that would be possible. But there are other seeds. Oh. But um, we don't know all about them yet, So, but we're asking, and little by little we get a little more information, because we do have different colors of species on our planet, and they, they had different origins, especially the Indian species over in India, Mideast, that, is a, that was a, a seeded area. So we know every that race sure. has had been seeded yeah, in the past. Every, Every race has been seated, but we were given a confirmation on that. So, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there's lots more than that, I'm sure. Orions, Aryans, or Nordics are <coughs> typical of would be Scandinavian <coughs> people, and obviously white people have direct relation to Pleiadians and Orion Nordics, which are related to each other. Yes. Um, in Africa, there is a lot of black Syrians from Syria. Mm -hmm. There are tribes. <coughs> the Gon tribe, I think, is the name of the tribe which still remembers their connection to Syria. Egyptian pharaohs, I believe, are said to be from Syria, uh, at least closely related to Syrians. Um, Mayans have been from from other, I think, from the star Maya, the planet, <coughs> planet Maya. But that, that, I think, is uh, the knowledge you can get from other sources. But you know, some of it is confirmed. I think um, Japanese was very interesting. They were uh, kind of created to, I think it was said in some channel that they were created to glue the Earth together, to glue the human races together. And actually, the, all, all agents, but, but Japanese especially. Uh, I'm wondering what are the Jews coming from? They said that they came from a planet, but but they don't say from say from which planet. 
and this whole story is still a, a mystery. All right, so um, something limiting, is there something limiting uh, you from visiting the colonies? Why are we not told or what are these limits? Uh, why don't they send us messages and contact us? Oh, that bothers me as well. They're very slow in accepting this. One answer they gave is that for their technology to be safe, you have to be of high spiritual frequency vibration. And they give a number about about 5.1 vibration. And another person asked, what? how do you measure this vibration? And I actually, we don't have a good measure. But I, when I speak to them, I ask about this person, this person, this person. And I kind of get a, a, a ratio, basically. If a person is vibrant, healthy, and happy, and positive, that would be above 4.7 and even about 4.9, closer to 5 and 5 plus. If you're unhealthy, negative, depressed, full of fear, full of strong anger, emotions, suspicions, I would say you can't rise above 4.5. You get get stuck there. You can be healthy, you can be uh, energetic, but because of the fear and anger and rejection, I don't like that. I hate this. I hate that. You get stuck about 4.5, 4.6. Um, so it's a and another question was it's a question which uh, how do you raise our spiritual frequency? You can speak about that for a long time, give lots of lessons, and actually, if we knew all the answers, we wouldn't be here. Uh, I'm stuck at a certain level, and I know my limitations. I know the answers, but knowing the answers doesn't help me to get higher. Basically, you define the spiritual frequency, I define, and I think they confirm that, is how much of the spirit can fit in your body. It's a measure of the body, how much spirit is there. Obviously, we are extensions of the spirit. We are extensions of higher self. But we are very physical. And now it's like playing a computer game. Say, if you play a computer game and you become a hero down there, how much of you can that computer figure, that computer hero, the character, can fit in? You know, some simplistic with three pixels or five pixels can't fit much of you. but. As the game becomes more complex and more of you, more, it becomes more exciting for you, and more of your life is there. So some people live half of their life in the computer games. That's you know their characters there have their character in many ways. <laughs> Same thing with us. Our higher self play in this computer game, and we are physical here. We obey the rules, and very rarely they allow to cheat on the rules. Sometimes these are called miracles when they cheat on the physical rules. Yeah. So, uh, how to allow more of your higher self to enter you and be comfortable in you? Understand, for them, from many dimensions above, it's really hard to get down in that physical body. So, I s asked my higher self when I had a chance, how much time you spend in me? And he said that he's absorbs me, he pays attention to what I'm doing, about two, three hours a day. And I assume it's because it's not that interesting for them to be here. So the rest of the time, or the rest of 21 hours, I'm on my own. And my life is boring much of the time, and that's, you know, he doesn't learn much by being here. And it's not easy to be here. It's not easy for aliens to be in Jim's body. Some of them feel uncomfortable just because, you know, human body is very limited. So to make your body more comfortable, more interesting for, her, for your higher self is to be, for your higher self to be here is the way to bring, it's one of the answers, to bring in more of the spirit into you. You have to have your life more comfortable for the spirit and more interesting and more spiritual in a way it has to be vibrant, it has to be important. So doing important things is important. So it's a balance between being healthy on one hand and doing important things. And for me, it's the main. Well, I think a lot of things is, are dependent on intention, too. They speak a lot about intention. Yes. 
about your intent for your life and how you're uh, moving forward in your intention and <clears throat> and being yourself and uh, letting the things that you do be you know true be true to yourself sort of thing that's a perfect point yes Bashar says a lot of that about that I know because trying to be someone else trying to follow the, the standards of others well, a lot of people try to fit in, and if you try to fit in, you're not being yourself. Uh, you're being, you're forcing yourself into a space, and that's not who you are. So, be who you are because that's when your light will really shine the most. So, and that's what I've gathered from them. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bashar's answer is follow your highest excitement. Your real excitement, your highest creative activity guides you where you want to go next next. If you're doing something that bothers you, which you hate, that's a signal that you have to go other direction. Mm -hmm. And the main question you can ask yourself, mm -hmm. what is the most important thing I could I can do right now? And next. And obviously, you know, sometimes uh, Planting seeds, digging the ground, you know, being in the garden, going to the closest tree and hugging the tree would be the most important thing for you. It doesn't have to be climbing on a tribune, you call it a tribune, and speaking to everybody, teaching the truth, which we are doing right now. But um, yeah, what today's session was, the, especially the poetry. The poetry is so great. I, I love that their poetry is so much like ours. Lo writing a poem for me sometimes is the most important thing I can do, the most creative thing I can oh, do. Oh, your last poem was genius. It was fabulous. It was really good. It was I, I Give Up? Is that what the hell it is? Check it out. Uh, we accept donations. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Um, he wrote a poem called I Give Up, and it's yeah, really it's right on dot org and it goes go in the poem poetry section and there is my poem and there is one more poem another user posted which was I liked it oh uh, the one from who? you didn't read it yet oh okay. okay all right so what else um being positive basically happy people have high vibration that's that's the fact. So if you guard yourself, isolate yourself from the world, right? You can be happy. I don't read news. I don't. I I know the news from Taka. She tells me there is trouble, so I, I check out and Google. But if Taka wouldn't tell me, I wouldn't know. So that helps me to keep my vibration way higher. If I start reading news, I get way sink. I think so. Turning off the television, turning off the newspapers, anything helps you to raise your vibration. That's my first recipe. Not having television as well. In this, in this house, we didn't have television. In this household, since I left my parents, 30 plus years. Wow. <laughs> but you have the lovely internet. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, the difference is they don't feed me. I go and find what I want to. Exactly. Be proactive. So isolating yourself is not enough. You can be in your, how do you call it, a rose tower? Something like that. Your ivory tower. Ivory tower. You can be in your ivory tower, but you, the energy goes away. You can be very happy, but your energy shrinks. <laughs> you have to be connected. You have to have energy go from, from the earth, from your higher self, well, from the God, to the reality, to the reality. And Through, you have to be a channel, the best of the channel. And from each other as well. So connecting to other people, meaningful, meaningful connection, connections are important. So it's a balance again. You isolate yourself, and then you, you become vibrant, and then you do something. Without doing something, you can't really raise your vibration. It has to be like a vortex. Uh, a human life is a vortex. Vortex is where it, I will show it like that where energies come together in a vortex. You have to, if 
the energy is shrink and there is no vortex, it means you are not in a flow. The flow is multiple flows come together and there is a vortex. So if your life is not a vibrant vortex, move somewhere where energies are. I found the gym channels and I moved there and my wife became more important, right? Mm -hmm. And my vibration didn't rise much, why? Because it's depressing, right? You are an important place, but you know, again, you want to do something important, and then, and then, you get challenges. Oh, so, yeah. so one thing sure. is you can, you know, oh, be yeah. here. You can isolate. You connect to other people. But whatever happens every day, every other day. You get a new test. I mean, that's that's a part of our game. Yes. Out of nowhere, it comes, boom, under you. And the way you take it that's true. is utterly important for your vibration. Go that's ahead. true. Um, yeah, we're in dire situations at times, and we, we just need have to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have to depend on positivity, attracting the positive, and doing what God wants us to do as far as individuals be ourselves and do the perfect thing, and then we get what we need, but not much more, because that's just the way it works. You get what you need. You get what you need. So, I had a, a nice lesson like a few days ago. My friends visited for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And we happened to go to the forest. And none of them took leadership. They kind of were all recessive, somewhat irresponsible. So I was leading the team. And there were many kids around, my kids, other kids. And they wanted to jump into the Lake Ontario, which was fro almost frozen. And they wanted to jump another lake, which was a thin layer of ice. And I was, was scared. You know, I'm leading this, the, the group of children and dogs. And they all want to sink in that ice water. Oh, so I, I handled that gracefully. I screamed at them. I pulled them out of there. We went in a place where is no, you know, on, the, on the mountain where they, you know, the water they can fall from the mountain, but at least they won't sink. All right? And uh, they were frozen. That's okay. We made a fire. And I had to pull them, push them. And it's not my style. I'm not pulling and pushing. I'm not giving command. And the main lesson I can I carried out of that. I don't want to be a leader. I'm not a leader. I can advise to you, to everybody. I want to be advisor, but I don't have a nerve to be in control. I don't want to be responsible. It's out. I cannot control everybody, right? It's not my style. I'm not born to, you know, tell people go here, go there, and don't go there. It makes me really, really, really unhappy to tell. So I'm happy others are taking care of that, but. <laughs> I'm a researcher. I'm exploring, so that's a nice exploration. So, so true me is not a leader, but giving advice and you know sometimes praising them, sometimes saying you're stupid. <laughs> and uh, that stupid is more, more, more frequent. So, <laughs> so the lessons are: you are given the same lesson over and over, same test, some lesson over and over by your guides by your higher self, and higher self delegates it to your guides. Your spirit guides are the one messing up your life. And if you fall down or have another, uh, how do you call this, uh, mischief happening to you, it's, it's because of the life plan, typically, most typically. And they test how you react to that. And raising in your vibration requires that you change the way you do things, the way to change you, the way you change the way you change the way you react to the tests. Say you come to work and you're late and you're late and you're late and you get punished. Typical, right? typical thing. So you and you react in the same way over and over. Whatever you react, I know I react one way, you would react another way. But you know the change in yourself to the same test, and then think life. life well, when you finally find a perfect way to react, and sometimes the perfect way is the my mantra, whatever. The perfect way to react to troubles is whatever. I want to do what I want, what is my path, not what others tell me to do. So, you know, that's one of the answers. But obviously, for everyone, for every test, it's a different answer. 
You have to be kind to others. That's one of the lessons. Whatever happens, I forgive you all. Blessed be your path. And I want to do most important thing, which is most important for me well, and for the others. So you can be yourself and still listen to others and still learn things. Yes. And I mean, you. It's not like you have to be dominant and you know the one that sets all the rules and all that. You just set your own rules. You just know what you can accept and what you can't accept and what you can give and you, what you can't give. You have to be true to yourself, but it doesn't mean like you have to be uh, a loner or not fit in or whatever, because sometimes you find a group of people where you're all fitting in very well and you all are yourselves and you're growing together and that's a wonderful thing. Just make sure you're just being yourself, you know, and your um, your vibration rises the more that you're yourself, using your talents, using those things that are you, not the things that are everybody else. Once as uh, Takara, what's my vibration and why it went down? And she said it's not important. And I once asked Lakesh, and his. Girlfriend says, again, the number is not important. The number is not what matters. It matters, you know, when you go to the colony, they can take you only above vibration five. But for everything else, vibration is just a number. Sometimes, you know, I have to sacrifice my happiness and go into, you know, health and other things go, goes down. I need to accomplish something important. So doing what is important, I think, is more important than the number. Right. I agree. Well, at least that's what we learned from them. So um, I, they would know more than me. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Oh, many more questions. Um, okay. Are we, are we done for raising your vibration, happiness, healthiness? Yeah. So being successful and healthy is important. But again, how do you measure success? If you're happy, you're successful. <laughs> because being happy is a success. Some people have to work very hard to be happy. And if you can be happy without working at it, that's success right there. That's part of being able to draw goodness to you and positivity to you. So I would say being happy is a, a one point of success. I look when at you, people who are, are really energetic, who are really mm -hmm. vibrant all the time, who shine with energy. And learn from them. And they're very interesting. Some of them are very sharp. Some of them wouldn't mind hurting someone. They would be in a, in a, in a, in a group and they would shout something <coughs> which would <coughs> transform other people. Yeah. And they wouldn't be afraid to transform other people. If they feel that greater good will come out of their sharpness, they wouldn't mind. You know, you just heard, um, we just heard, it was before that recording started, um, <coughs> a higher group <coughs> consciousness called L came, and they don't mind <coughs> big tr getting in, uh, getting our us in a big trouble for higher good for saving the humanity. So they are bold enough to do unpopular things and harm lots of people. You know, cause cause a big transformation which would harm lots of people. So we will publish that. Check it out. It's it just recorded. So we will uh, publish the conversation with L, the deity. Um, I'll need more. Why you the aliens still have secrecy in the contact? Um, my thought about that is their secrecy is things that they know that uh, if they would say them, um, they c it could be traced to something else. I get that. It, it would harm somebody else or something else. <clears throat> That's all I get. They don't want to be um, harming anything else other than they don't want to harm us either, but sometimes it gets too personal or too close to something that they can't uh, divulge at this time. 
Okay, two different questions. One is why do they contact individuals from the site? And Jim answered that. How do why do they keep secret the contact from you know why do and they do an open contact yet with the humanity? And the answer we had in our last conversation is it actually is recorded. Uh, James came through and he said they are working on that and the plans show that big part of the humanity is not ready. And if they just come out and say hello, um, it will cause a major crisis. And lots of people here agree, here meaning politicians and others agree with that, that just for the aliens come out and say hello would cause major crisis. And how, why is that? Well, simply because that, you know, if people mainstream all people believe that aliens are there, visiting, around. A lot of secrets will be open. And people will just realize that if the aliens are here, they have technology which is way stronger than ours. Step one in logic. If they are here, their technology is way better than ours. Especially if they're here from Pleiades which is very far. So if they can do that, they can do everything. Almost everything. OK, a lot. Uh, if, they, if the technology is better, then why do we need to pay taxes, much of which goes to the military? Step, step two. So if the aliens have strong technology, you know, why do we need to develop new weapons, which are way simply, simpler and weaker than alien? It doesn't make any sense anymore. And if you pay less taxes and we don't have our military, the whole global scheme of, of the economy falls apart because everything is built on weapons. I mean, trading weapons, controlling the fuel, how it goes, all of that is very finely tuned. And if any part of that falls apart, everything else will fall apart. So we are not ready just because our economy is so unstable. <coughs> Whatever disrupts the stability will make things collapse and it just will fall on us and it will be unpleasant. So uh, L, L, not L, L says that they plan to do that by, you know, through others. They are spiritual, they don't do things by themselves, but they plan to do that through, through others by simply giving messages here and there. And they plan it to do in 13 years in 2027. Check it out. We have it all over on our site. And now we have the conversation with AL recorded, so we'll publish that too. And uh, that's important news. I don't know how to take it. I'm still on guard. I don't know if it is a real number, if it's another 2012. We expected a lot of change in 2012. And we had some, but it wasn't radical. It was kind of nice change, but it wasn't radical. So. L says 2027 now is a approximate date for the economic crash. And after that, we'll still have everything. We'll have banks, we'll have uh, corporations, people will be around doing things, but it will be different. We'll see how, how it will happen. What was the question? Uh, ascension. What is, the, what is the ascension so erratic? Oh, the question was previous question was so why do they, they contact? So why don't they what? Why why don't they do open contact? So they have oh, a plan yeah. for open contact, and they say it will be within five years. And before that, they will they said it will be within a year, within a year, most likely about a year from now, lay, la, la, end of 2014, I think. We need to look up the records. But again, they changed their plan. So basically, how it works, they. Uh, authorized Yael to do the first contact because mm -hmm. Yael are most committed, close to us genetically, and kind, and they have been involved with their arms before. So, so Yael is still authorized to do the first contact. But on the other hand, Yael is so confused about us that whatever they propose is not approved by others. Others say, "Go and improve your plans. Your appearance is too skewed one way or another," and. Uh, and they're still working on the plan. So so they are preparing. And basically, what will happen after contact? That's already my answer, not the answer. My answer. Suppose the first contact happens. So things start 
crumbling and shaking. Uh, people wake up, oh, really? The aliens are there. Next thing is a lot of things will happen after that. Things will fall, fall one after another. So if aliens just say, hello, we are here, and don't do anything else, don't give us technologies, don't give us help, don't even support us you know, through messages there, um, that would be a misservice. I think it is very important for them to say, A, hello, we are here, and B, do other things. And most important other thing is to invite United Nations people, you know, representative to go up and mm -hmm. shake hands mm -hmm. and establish, you know, the first open contact between our representative and their representative. So we do the first step to be accepted in galactic uh, community. As countries like Ukraine are now fighting, other, do they want to join European Union or other countries like Poland or Czechoslovakia or Czechia now, they join European Union, Greece or Bulgaria. So you go through steps first to say, yes, we possibly want to. What, what are the conditions? What are the... So stay, saying <clears throat> hi, we're here is not enough. Second, you have to invite people. You have to be able to speak to them in English. It takes a lot of preparations. It takes, you know, possibly you wouldn't invite only one person from the United Nations. You would probably want to invite 50 people, representative of different countries. So you have to have housing for them. You have to have aliens who can understand what they say. And most of the aliens don't, really. Understanding humans is 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 not an easy part. Takei is doing a great job and few others who speak to us. But uh, most others have trouble speaking to us and, and interpreting things right. They understand the language, but they don't understand how to react to that. Uh, initially, they thought that our representatives, like presidents, would be good representatives of humans. And then they found that the presidents represent not the humans, the presidents represent military industrial complex, which has its own interest. And their interest is not to allow any contact whatsoever because uh, they will lose their funding, logically. If there are aliens, then military will lose their funding, at least in their, in their understanding. And I argue now, it's already on the side, I argue now, military will still have a job even after the contact. That would be a different job. It would be more like police. Still, keeping peace on Earth is important. They will be very qualified to help with disaster. So two tasks. First, keep peace on Earth, even after aliens arrive. And second, help in disasters. Military are great in that. Coastal Guard, whoever, they are great in that. So they will have to transform, but uh, there will be jobs for them, for sure. And third job, keeping the guard of the Earth. So right now, aliens are guarding us from reptilians, so our military are welcome to go there and serve on the same ships. The aliens will provide the technology, actually, when, they're making sure, when they made sure that it wouldn't be used to shoot down on Earth, but it will be directed outwards to guard the Earth from negatives, then the military will have jobs. So these three tasks, remember those. Mm -hmm. Keeping the Earth outside, peace on Earth from outside, peace on Earth inside, and helping in disaster. So, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but in their, they're afraid. They are, they are afraid. As we had George Wallace speaking here. George Wallace said, and they were, he said, they are afraid that the control will, will be taken over. So, so they have to live with that. They have to transform. They have to understand. It's up to us, actually. It's up to humans to reorganize, take the heat, come together, come together, and create a new way of organizing things and keep going. Go ahead. Next question was, why is the uh, ascension so erratic? Yes. There, it's because it's so young. December 21st was the beginning of the Ascension, but it started off so small as we had Lakesh say and Takur, I think, or Dizdu or somebody. I don't know. I'm not sure which ones. But they said that it, it started really slow and it's moving out. It, there's a lot of dark pockets in the world where there is no light. I heard them say that. Yes, pockets, yes. And, um, and it's very erratic because 
it's up to the people that are light workers to lift everybody up and to give a realization to the world of what's going on. So it's erratic because it's young. It will stay erratic for a while, I'm sure. But um, I hope it becomes smooth after a while. But it is erratic because it's so young. It's like giving birth. It's tough. It's painful. But it must be that way. So. All right. What do, what do they say? Um, how do you compare, a writer compare to what? We are in a unique situation. Most other races who did their ascension, they weren't as disjointed, and disconnected. Every human is a whole different world. The aliens are, it's most surprising for them. They say, we think we understand humans. We speak to another human, and it's in another new world. We speak to another. We are so disjointed. Within one synagogue, there is a lot of groups which fight with each other. Within a, a town, you know, there is so many layers. Within family, human within, you know, I am disjointed in a way. Now I'm a scientist. Now I am a, a preacher, <laughs> a father, and so on. And parts of me and this part of me is poetic, and this part of me, give me uh, your donations, right? Uh, <laughs> so you make it sound like a, <laughs> that's all you want. Um, but uh, disjointed. Yes, each person thinks differently. We have a different way of thinking between any one of us. I think one way. He may think a different way. She may think a different way. We come together, we can communicate, but we may not have the same kind of thought process. So when they look at us, our thought processes are so different one to another that it's very confusing. Even with the telepaths, they run into the fact that they're totally different people. We more or less are know each other better than you could possibly know each other down here. Telepaths actually know each other as a community. They know who's what and where and who's doing what at what time, and we don't. We we're separate. We're we're different than what they are, what they expect. So yes, telepathy is a key. Uh, most of the other races they develop telepathy first, and with telepathy they ascend it to the fourth dimension. Uh, we are not very good in telepathy. They say there is so few telepaths on Earth. They kind of were very happy when they discovered that they can train people to do telepathy, especially children. So they invite people to do group meditations, which very much are like our meditations. And uh, some develop telepathy and finally speak. Being exposed to aliens kind of raises your vibration. So when you speak to telepaths, they read you, you kind of mirror them, you start doing progress, learning from, from alien telepaths. So now they have a cluster of, I think, six, maybe eight telepaths in the colonies, and they hope to grow that. But you know, going from eight telepaths to seven, seven billion is close to impossible. It looks like we are doing our ascension without much of telepathy. Maybe only a few humans will be telepathic. So what is the ascension then? Um, Four-dimensional energies, that's what they say. They kind of flood the Earth. And I don't know, so far they are very very unclear what is that fourth dimension. As far as I can hear, it's the ability to go through walls. It's kind of useless activity. I mean, just going through walls, you know, all this trouble because of, you know, laziness. No, you don't do doors anymore, you just go through walls. I think it's kind of boring. It's not worth the, the you know all the trouble. There has to be more to it than that, and there should be more than that. They're not telling us what it is. Yeah, it's really hard to explain to a deaf person what is music and to a blind person what is a landscape. It's really hard. So how you know we are here? How do we explain to you what is ascension if we are not haven't been there yet? <laughs> That's a good point. So why is That's a good point. Good point. Uh, but we still know some answers. So my answer is mind control, brainwashing, deception. Mm -hmm. You know, we are brainwashing you, and we are hopefully brainwashing in a good direction. But you know, switch the channel, and you'll be brainwashed back right away. 
Yeah. <laughs> Deception. Is anybody still listening? <laughs> no, we have four people, but you know, they will listen later. Uh, Deception. Uh, donate to us $20 and you'll become a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wish that were true? What? If the idea of twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> now, if that were true, then we'd be millionaires by now. Yeah. I, another thing. Uh, the question was, how do you own meditation? They said about mentioned own meditation, and people didn't know what it is. So we'll end up with own meditation. And it's very homemade, and I think it has to be homemade. It has to be. A ma how do you say amateur? That's how you say amateur. 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 Ama amateur. It has, be, it has to be amateur. It has to be. From the heart, meaning non standard. Mm -hmm. So you don't see like an opera singer, you see it like a child would see. Well, yeah. And what the sound doesn't matter actually. What yeah. happens inside you matters. And inside you, you try to grow the love again from the heart. But what the own becomes is your vibration moving out in the world to touch other people because you cannot. Ohm at a vibration you're not at. So your vibration is the ohm. And you're connecting with other people with that sound, with that vibration, and they're connecting to you, and you're lifting each other. So that vibration is who you are. So it doesn't matter, you can't really try to do an ohm, you just it comes out the way it should come out. And when it comes out, let it go. And it will be who it is, who you are. That's your vibration. It'll fill you up. It'll go out and meet other people. And it's part of telepathy, I think, the OM, because it is moving out from the heart. So, and that's where telepathy starts, is in the heart. So, so you see, Jim is higher vibration than I. So what you heard is a couple decimals, or a few decimals above me. I'll bring it down. <laughs> I'll bring it down. So sound doesn't matter. And on the on the web, I just googled for YouTube just for you to get an example of home. I couldn't find an example of good home, homemade home. There are songs, but there is not at the end of the song you can hear that home, but it's all that is that home sound. So what I'm saying, on YouTube there was one message saying Om is satanistic or something like negative. You kind of invite evil to the world. No. Do you? Again, it depends on your, your intention. intention. Your here, intention. Here we your intention. If you want it to be good, all is just one of the names of God. It's one of the vibrations of God. If you put the intention to be united with God, you you will you'll do that. If you put your fear into that, you know, your fear will, will manifest. So Om is just one of the major mantras. You know, you can do let me invent something. You can do that mantra. Okay. Let me see. You can do that mantra and put some magic meaning into that. I'm sure somebody did that. I just came out with something strange. So Om is just one of the ways to do things. It's just one of the tools. So we'll demonstrate that. And it'll stop. Goodbye. Uh, nice to have you around. And um, we'll continue. I think it was excellent, actually. I love the poetry. Poetry part was great. And discussion, I actually was able to speak this time uh, with help of Jim and with inspiration from Jim. It was nice. I think discussion was came out also. We'll do more answers to next time. So we'll do, we'll do all now, right? OK. Uh, Reiki hands, you kind of put the energy around. That's, that's Reiki. Reiki is a healing art, you kind of send healing energy. So. We add this hidden energy and we unite each other with the world and uh, bless be everyone. And we send healing to everybody, including everybody. Yes. No exception. Um.